Let's say you're in a big car accident. You got hit on the driver's side. That would be the left side in the U.S. And <clears throat> if you got hit at 30 miles an hour, your, <clears throat> your seatbelt would hold you to the seat and that would take you in this direction. But your upper body would still be stationary and be going in this direction. This is called shear force and would cause lateral bending on this side. But the problem is also not only would there be lateral bending, there would be a rotational component and translation, lateral translation. So <clears throat> after the accident, people generally don't feel too much pain. Um, they're more in shock that day, but uh, the next week, uh, the pain starts catching up with them and this is what happens generally so <clears throat> as you can see we have a malposition we have a jamming of the facets on this side we have a open wedge on this side also, there would be ligaments here that could have been torn. This is generally this is generally the main diagnosis, lumbar sprain strain. This is the sprain strain side. And on this side, the disc is compressed. So the problem with that is the disc is 70% water and water is not compressible. So if there's high pressure here, the water is going to find an exit and the weakest place in the disc will be the exit. So it could be anywhere around here. Now, if there were previous injuries, those would be the most likely places. So, <clears throat> now, Dr. Gonstead was an engineer, and he called this a posterior right superior listing. Now that is how we describe this spinous process and vertebra in relation to this one. So it's posterior, turn to the right, the spinous is on the right, And it's superior here. Now the reason why that's important is because this side would show a wedge on the x-ray. 